Hey, what's up? My name is Nigel, and I got kind of a different video for you today. Today, I'm actually gonna be doing a camera comparison, and luckily, my buddy Darren was nice enough to lend me his Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera. Now, this is the one camera that I've actually been kind of contemplating buying for a while now. The main reason being is that it has a micro four thirds mount and I do have a lot of micro four thirds lenses. And so this would just be kind of an obvious choice if I wanted to move to a more cinematic camera and you know, just get past the limitations of my GH3. So what I kind of wanted to do today was to actually see how much better this camera is than my GH3, especially when it comes to just viewing stuff on YouTube. I know for a fact that the Blackmagic Pocket, which is what you're seeing me on right now, this camera is miles better than my GH3, like miles better. But I also just kind of wanted to see practically how noticeable it was. What I thought I'd do is pit my seven-year-old GH3 against this relatively new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. Now, instead of just going out and filming flowers or just random stuff with these two cameras, I kind of wanted to do more controlled settings because honestly, no one's ever paid me to go out and film flowers. So I wanted to set up some stuff that I might actually shoot, like a talking head scene, and then just some scenes outdoors because that's probably the two situations that I'll probably be using a camera like this in, shooting YouTube videos or interviews, and then shooting some like nature landscape type stuff. If I bought this camera, to be honest, I probably wouldn't shoot in 4K and I would rarely shoot in RAW. Now the reason being is because that's just gonna slow me down way too much. Uh, it's gonna slow down my computer and it's just gonna slow down my workflow. So just like with any camera that I'm gonna get in the future, I'm probably still gonna shoot in 1080p. Now I'm gonna guess that the 1080p is still miles better than the 1080p on my GH3, but I still wanna test it. So instead of giving the Blackmagic Pocket the upper hand by shooting 4K, I'm gonna shoot in 1080p on the Blackmagic Pocket and then obviously 1080p on my GH3 because that's the size it can shoot. So we're just gonna kind of test some different things. We're obviously gonna see the sharpness. I'm gonna be using the exact same lens on both cameras. We're gonna be seeing the dynamic range. And again, I'm not gonna be shooting in RAW, but I will be shooting in ProRes on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. So I just kind of want to see practically if there was a huge difference to where I just couldn't stick with my GH3s anymore and I would want to upgrade to something like the Blackmagic Pocket. But pure image quality isn't gonna be the only thing that I'm gonna factor into this test. I'm also gonna factor in setup time, usability, ergonomics, all that kind of stuff, because that stuff actually does mean a lot to me. If something slows me down and hinders me from making more YouTube videos, then it's not the right camera for me. So even though the Blackmagic Pocket might be a better camera on paper and a better camera on screen, it still might not be the best camera for me. Just a little bit of a background, I have owned Blackmagic cameras before. I've owned the Blackmagic Pocket Original twice now. I really like that camera, it's just, it's not a YouTube camera. That camera takes so much rigging and there's so many workarounds with it that it's just not the best camera when you're trying to make YouTube content. So that's why I've stuck with my GH3s. But uh, yeah, let's get into the test. I'm gonna set up some interview style, like, you know, talking head type shots. And then I'm gonna go out into the woods and shoot some landscape stuff. Just so we can see how shooting in a nice flat profile in ProRes is gonna get me more dynamic range than the baked in profiles on the GH3. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video and let's get to it. So I actually had to shoot these outdoor shots a few hours apart due to the fact that I forgot an SD card for my GH3 and that's why I have different pants on. For these tests, I graded both cameras with film convert and I shot them both using the Sigma 18 to 35 with a Metabone speed booster. You can kind of see that the black magic is retaining a bit more detail in the clouds, but overall these shots are actually pretty similar. This shot is basically pointless, but I shot it with a black magic, so I decided to shoot it with a GH3 as well. I feel like this shot shows off the fact that you can get a little bit better colors out of the black magic than you can with the GH3. My GH3 always struggles with color because of that 8 bit codec. In this shot, I just wanted to test the sharpness of both cameras in 1080p. It's very subtle, but the detail is definitely there on the Blackmagic. So in this shot, just pay attention to the highlight roll off on my skin. As soon as we switch to the GH3, you can see how much harsher the light looks, even though the lighting didn't change at all. 
So what are my conclusions with this camera? Obviously, this is a beast of a camera and it gives you an amazing image. Much better than my Panasonic GH3. But at the same time, it is kind of clunky and it definitely isn't as easy to use as my GH3 is. Now, this is the shot that I normally have with my GH3 and personally, I think this looks totally fine. And I was able to get a similar shot with this, but obviously it took some tweaking and I had to use a lot and get everything uh, looking the way I normally have it. The dynamic range on this camera is amazing. I love shooting in ProRes back when I had the original Blackmagic Pocket. So easy to use, so easy to edit with. I like that it has a full size HDMI port and using it with a monitor like this, this is the Portkeys P6, which I did a review of recently right up there, you can go check out. But yeah, this is just a solid cinema camera. And I think that's the key word here, that this is a cinema camera. This isn't marketed as a video camera or a YouTuber's camera, and I knew that. I do know a lot of people that use this camera as their main YouTube camera, and it gives an amazing image, as I said. But at the same time, for me, I don't think this is something that I could use as my daily driver when it comes to making YouTube videos, strictly because it is kind of clunky, um, it's really big, it's cumbersome, and it just doesn't have the ergonomics or the usability that even my pants on a GH3 does. And honestly, I still think that my GH3 held its own, even against a beast of a camera like this, but obviously, the dynamic range and the actual video detail, like it just can't hold up to a camera like this. This camera is far superior. As far as whether or not I'm gonna switch to this camera, I don't think so, at least not yet. If I do, it definitely won't be my YouTube camera. I've been contemplating whether or not I wanna get a new camera, you know, sell my GH3s, but right now, I'm still perfectly happy with my GH3s and even if I had a camera like this, I probably still wouldn't use it for YouTube. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was definitely fun to mess around with this Blackmagic Pocket. Big thanks to my buddy Darren who lent this to me. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, it'd be cool if you hit the like button. And if you wanna check out some more of my videos, I'll have them on either side of my face. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you all next time. Later.